And then now we mentioned, you know, leverage and falcon, right? Um, generally, when you talk about leverage and falcon, people will think that, okay, leverage is like jiu jitsu or, you know, drain locking. You have an arm, this is that stick, I'm gonna put it here, anchor it here, and apply force here, right? If I apply force here, it doesn't break. But the further I go from the, the, the anchoring point, the easier it is to break, the more force I can get. Yes, this is leverage and falcon, you know, this, you know, arm bar on the ground, or maybe, you know, a drain lock like, like this, or like, you know, figure four. All of those are shining examples of leverage and falcon yes. But they are examples of classical leverage and classical fell falcon, right? Um, nothing wrong with it, of course, but that's not the full extent of how leverage can affect our body. In Tai Chi, we talk about a very different type of leverage. So, a lot of people out there in doing, doing Tai Chi will talk about leverage. But very few actually explains what leverage Tai Chi actually uses. Tai Chi certainly does not use this type of leverage, okay? Which is why I would say, you know, some of these guys like Dr. Yang would make Tai Chi into a drain locking art because then it's very easy to explain what leverage is. But in my understanding, that's false, okay? In Tai Chi, leverage is viewed as a very different thing. So, if we have a contact point here, right? Let, let's take a set example just to be e easy. Then this, in Tai Chi, we believe is the anchor point, right? So this is basically this thing here. And both of our body are the stick. So, you know, if I were to do it figuratively, this is that stick, and this is the point that the stick is, is balancing on. Now, so we, have, we each have half of, of the stick. Now, if he, okay, yeah, hold, hold it. If he is pulling from here, and I'm pulling from here, we have the same amount of, of leverage. So whoever is stronger, heavier, taller, is going to win. Now, the moment he shifts to here, pulling with here instead of here, he's got a longer leverage than me if I'm still pulling from, from here. Which is why it's much more difficult for me to pull him, but easier for him to, to, to pull me. But if he's, put, if he's pulling from the elbow, and I'm pulling from my shoulder, then I have a longer leverage than him. Okay, and obviously if he pull from the back or from the, the waist, he has longer leverage than me, etc, etc. So eventually, you know, at high level of Tai Chi, they will both be pulling from the rear foot. And then they will still have the same amount of leverage. Which is why, um, you know, in the olden text, high level Tai Chi masters very suddenly are able to have a winner and a loser when they touch hands. It's usually a draw when they are on a similar level. Because they basically have the same amount of leverage on each other and they don't wanna you know, I mean you practice, if they really fight to the death, they'll probably find out someone is slightly better, but there's no point to that. So this is actually how leverage works in Tai Chi. Now if you look back in a few videos, uh, the Patreon only videos, where I talk about shoulder ex expansion, right? It, I tried to talk about leverage then, but I kind of just you know forgot how to explain it properly. I wasn't prepared to explain about leverage. But in that video we basically talk about the, the same thing with uh, for example the white crank opening the wing, right? So if he had a hand here and I'm trying to, to, to pull him that way, again, not the application, but a way to show structure. If I'm, so this is not the center of the beam. Now if I'm actually pulling him from this, then, and he's you know, using his whole body to push against me, then he's actually using this to push my body in a bad way. And the more power I apply here, the more I push myself that way. Which is why it does not work. But the moment, I connect this but relax, I don't actively use this, this becomes in. And I'm extending my shoulder and using the back to pull him. So I suddenly have more leverage than, than him. Of course, if he also connects the back, then we have equal leverage. At which point, we will need to change our, our force into a different direction and try to catch each other off guard. That's like the more advanced stages of Tai Chi. We're not going to talk about that today, we're going to look at the easy stuff, the basic stuff, the leverage. So that is how Tai Chi uses leverage. And in Tai Chi, we don't call it leverage, we call it separation of yin and yang, okay? So in this case, so this is in, and that is yang. Or, you know, this whole thing is in, and yang is from here all the way to the, to the head, or to the foot, right? If I'm actually, so ideally, because just now, I'm, I'm, doing my sh I'm using my shoulder to, to pull him back. Ideally, I wanna, you know, eventually use the rear foot, which will even have more leverage than just the shoulder. And this is kind of complicated, hard to understand, right? Well, our body is not a perfect stick. So if you have trouble understanding this, 
you can try to refer to the four fundamental forces of internal. So basically, when I say I'm using my foot to pull in that way, I'm basically relaxing into the foot, opening the hip, rotating the hips, compressing the back, extending the shoulder. The all, all those four core fundamental forces are at play in order for the force on my foot, or for the foot to be the original force that connect my whole body into a stick that leverage him out, of, out toward there. Um, so that is pretty much how I would explain leverage in, in the you know, context of internal martial art. Uh, I mean, do you have something you want to add? I mean, you're more science guy than me, right? And is this leverage? Uh, yeah, I guess so. so um, is there any other perspective you can add to this phenomenon, so to speak? It's almost up. You know, it's, um, when when Chris mentioned about your the your shifting your 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 sense your your source of power, I, the way that I see it, source of power, it's almost like you know um, taking a holding a long stick with a load at the end. The longer the stick, right, the same load, but the longer the stick it is, the, the, actually the the, the 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 heavier the object is. So you actually want to, although not physically. You want to shift the load from further away from the stick to the to the center of your source of power. The closer it is, the load is to your center of your source of power. The the the, the, the lighter and the less effect, uh, the more effective your force. So um so uh, uh, the way that I understand it is that your basically these are your your center of power generally is in your core muscle um, or sometimes your legs as well. So, if your load, if you're, if you're fighting your load, or if you're fighting a force, all the way from your hands, right? Obviously, you have got all that distance in between, and it's, it's harder. So, what you want to do is you want to bring, bring the load or the, the, the site where you fight the force closer towards your body, and as the, and normally it com, comes in the joints, you come through the joints. So you start with your wrist, and then to your elbow, and then to your back, etc. So the way that I understand it is that if your fight, your sight where you are fighting against your opponent is closer towards the center of your power, the easier it will become to you. Mm -hmm. so, so that's how I understand. It. Yeah, that stick one is actually a good example. Yeah, yeah. that actually is, is very good. Ah, yeah. That's so when you hold it out and the yeah, longer stick it is, the higher yes. easier you you will be get. Yeah, I, okay, that's why you don't know one, right? <laughs> right. But, yeah. So 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 that's really good. Yes. Yeah. So so this so we're like when we when we cross hand we're like a stick, and whoever has the weight further back has the advantage. It's like a balance beam, right? If you sit further away, you're gonna push, push the other guy up. Um, all right. So this is like the most crude example, right? A hand like this, but it's the one that you can actually try at home. That's what we we, we focus on this. But the same thing will apply in a more abstract way. Um, let me see. Okay, so we're gonna talk about two examples briefly. The first one is from Chen Stop, right? Um, Chen Zhonghua, right? The Tai Chi master, Chen Stop master, that I think is very good. He often talk about this. He doesn't call it leverage, so to say. He mentioned it as uh, you know, moving and not moving. Okay. He also says separation of yin and yang, right? But yeah, separation of yin and yang is universal. But in his own word, is is the certain part of the body must move. Certain part of the body does not move. In other words. Um, if I'm you know, pulling something, right? I had this example be, be, before. If my whole body moves, then I actually generate no force. Because I have nothing to push against. So if, he's, if he comes here, and I'm pulling his arm, and I'm trying to push my whole body, so I'm actually got nothing to push against. And therefore, even though it looks like I'm moving everything together, right, it's what Tai Chi say, right? You don't will, but don't. Like once you move, everything moves. Once you stop, everything stops. A lot of people take that two, you know, sentence literally to the letter, and they start doing everything like everything moves, everything moves. But they don't realize that you know that needs to be based on the foundation of separation of yin and yang. And in this case, separation of yin and yang is that my legs are in and does not move. My my upper torso through the spine, and my elbow and, and the rotational force is yang. So I'm I'm pushing over my legs here, but releasing my, you know, expanding my hips, and then, okay, hold, and I'm doing this. 
right? But if I do, you know, this, that's what happens. So, in Chen Zhonghua's word, now this is not my word, Chen Zhonghua's word, so I'm going to credit him for it. Uh, you know, he will say that if you take a bottle and try to unscrew it, if the bottom hand is not fixed, you just turn the bottle as a whole, and it, you cannot open the, the cap. You know, to open the cap, you have to anchor half of the bottle, and then the force on top can work. So you have to either go opposite way, or, or, the, or the hand here doesn't move, and this one moves. And that is a very good way of explaining the basic separation of yin and yang, in a mechanical way, okay? When any type of motion, there's part of your body that moves, and a part of the body that you anchor against that does not move, that, that acts as a support. So, so in this case, obviously this isn't a chain style example, but let's just look at this as a case. In this case, this becomes in, this is the part that actually moves. This, this part, I mean, it moves because of this, but in itself it does not move, and therefore it is in. And obviously the rest of my body does not move, right? I'm only, I'm basically, my, my body is acting as the support and just putting my, my elbow into my bo 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 body. So that's an example of yin and yang. Um, well, as you know, that one would be an example that you, know, you can see in, in Chen style. Or like one we had last time was la 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 jia yi, in which case, you know, this side is in and does not move, this pushes slightly into the arm, which is yang. All right, so if you want to understand that, you can actually watch his video. Uh, and then today we're going to talk about another type of yin and yang, which is from yang style. Now the, so the Chen style yin and yang is correct, right? I'm not saying it's wrong. Uh, and it is important and it, 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 it is practiced in the yang style as well. We see that as a skeleton yin and yang, right? the bones. How bones separate yin and yang is exactly that. But on top of that is also the separation of bone and skin. Okay, In Chinese we call it gu rou fen li, or the separation of bones and flesh. Again, okay, this is like starting to sound like a heavy territory, right? It's very mystical and strange and doesn't make sense. That's because, you know, it's language barbarian, right? Olden day people that describe something, they tend to describe things more mystical, but there are always another way to explain it that is more understanding in, in, the, in the modern context. And although I can't tell you the exact science behind this, but it does work. So what that means is, We'll take the example of Peng. So I'm going to have my hand here, and I'm going to put my hand here, and he's going to push here and here. Now, if I'm tensing up my whole arm here to push it against him, then just like the example where he pulls my, my arm here, right? He actually has control on my center of balance. You know, even though I'm sitting here, but if I'm actually pushing him with my arm here, if he's strong and he overcomes this force, I'm going to get pushed back because my own arm pushing forward is going to push me back. It's just like if you push against the wall, you push yourself back. Okay, the wall doesn't push at all. But just the fact that you are applying force to an immovable object, the rebound force of yourself pushes yourself back. So, in this case, if I'm actively pushing him and he's way stronger than me, I'm basically pushing myself back. All right? So, how do we combat that? On the first layer, which is the chain style layer, they will tell you that, okay, you don't push here, so, or, or should I say this part is the one that moves, but you fix the tailbone and the hips, and the hip opens, the hip goes up, the, the back arches, and the tailbone fixes here. So no matter how he pushes, I don't give this away, and I'm pivoting this push, on this even more both structure. So that's the separate of yin and yang. But then when you push, although I'm still pushing him with my arm, but I'm pushing him with my arm against my body. I'm not pushing him all in the arm. Okay, so that's the difference. So that way, even though my arm is really relaxed, I'm able to push I'm able to raise that quite a lot of food because it's sitting into my core. And once I'm balanced here, I can then use my core or as a as a anchor point and I push it off. With my arm. At that point, his force is pushing here, and I'm pushing him here with another force. So that's how um, he get pushed back. So when it, when it comes to actual, you know, each movement of Tai Chi, there's a it's kind of complex, but there are different separation of yin and yang in each motion, in each posture. So we're gonna just use an example to give you a general idea of how shape of yin and yang, you know, works. Now. So this is the chain style understanding, and again, it's correct. Yang style does this too. But on top of that, there's another layer, 
Okay, but in the tidy classic, it says that one place has one place of yin and yang, and every place all have the same separation of yin and yang. So what in the whole body does is fixed, so it's movable, okay? The arm would also have yin and yang. So in a nutshell, right, without um, you know, playing a coin, basically when I'm contacted here, this side that he's touching on, I'm gonna relax. And this side that he's not touching, it's gonna be expanding. Or this arm is relaxed, and this hand is not. So, so at, at every given isolated scenario, there is a separation of yin and yang. Now, that one is not easy to see from this motion, so we're going to try another one. Right? Um, I'm going to let him push my chest. Now the chest, again, not the application. You want people to push your chest. If something pushes hit your chest, he can punch you. And if he punches you, even if he's good, you are going to get injured. So this is not an application. It's just a way to understanding structure again. So. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, put this out on the other side. Yeah, just uh, yeah, build a balance. Yeah. Right, so now, now I know you might be thinking of you know Chen Xiao Wang, the Chen Village guy who does this demo where he asks a guy to, to push him on the hip here and he's like here. Now I've talked about this in the past, so I'm not gonna go into detail, but you know, these are fake because he's actually holding an elbow and that one is holding the, the back, so he's actually cutting off the foot. Right, the foot doesn't actually reach here, it's actually you know getting diverted here, and he's squeezing him from this, this, this back side to this elbow here. So the guy is actually struggling among himself rather than applying force to him. And furthermore, pushing here, and he's actually leaning forward and charge, right? So, so he's actually pulling directly into his legs. And therefore, as long as you have some reasonable leg strength, it's very hard to move somebody when they're like this, okay? But the problem is, if he suddenly grabs you and pulls you, the guy will lose balance because, you know, if you watch his video again, he's like literally like, like, like this. Okay, so even though yes, he can't stand force like that, a lot, a lot of force at, at that, it has zero combat liability because you're actually literally giving your own balance away, right? Unless the guy is, is a wooden dummy, he's gonna change his direction of force and you're gonna trip. So demos like that are fake and serves no real purpose. And in our example, we're gonna push the chest because the chest, unlike the, the hips, are not directly connected to the legs. So if he's pushing here and I'm doing something wrong, then you know, it will break by my waist. And it's much harder to fight against the force here than here. The reason we don't do it to the arm is because with the arm, I can do a lot of angles that I can play and can control. There are subtle things that I can also change the outcome. There are types of people out there who, who use angle and tricks subtly and present that as internal power. Not saying angle and tricks are not allowed in Tai Chi, but they don't equate to, to structure and power understanding. Right? Those two are different things. You need power first, and then talk about tricks and, and angles. So, bring the chest again, right? there's also tricks here. Like, you know, I've seen people say, when, you know, I've seen people where they push really hard, and the guy like slightly turns, you know, or slightly turns that way. So that tricks too, but we're gonna talk about tricks. What we're gonna talk about is separation of yin and yang. So once he pushes here, okay, if I fight him with the front of my chest, you see, if I fight him here, then I'm actually pushing myself up. Just like the example of the wall, right? If I'm actually pushing him on the point of contact, and because he's stronger, right? Because he's got a whole arm strength, and I just have my chest, and my, you know, your body doesn't generate the same of power your arm can do. And obviously, he's pushing me with his body too, okay? You see, I'm gonna give push behind. Okay, so now, without changing the physical form of things, all right, I'm gonna, Relax the chest and then stop pushing with my back. So. So. Okay, so you can see a difference. Of course, like I always say, right, this is no magic, so you can't withstand infinite amount of force. And obviously, you know, just now when I'm must align myself, you get pushed out too. So again, this is it's physics, right? It's thing you got to do right to have an effect. It's not magic. Um, so what? You can't really see what happened, right? But I'm gonna try to explain it as best as I could. So I'll add a certain amount of force, right? Constant. When I'm pushing him with my chest, just like the example with the hand, I'm handing him my center of, of, of balance. So if he's stronger than my center of balance, I'll be helping him to push, push myself out. 
But if I relax the chest, this side of my torso, the second of my torso, right? But I'm consolidating on the back. So this is, it's not completely wobbly, soft. But I'm, I'm relaxing this side actively. So there's nothing like this, right? I'm doing it more obvious on purpose. It's not something like this. So this side becomes inactive, becomes in, but the back becomes young. And all of a sudden, he doesn't have control of the of the force I, I, I'm using. Just like over here with the you know the wrist and, and, and the elbow. Obviously, this is much harder. So this is not something that you can do until you have a sufficient amount of practice. Um, so this is not an example of saving up yin and yang on the body without the hand or, or the legs, right? Just that side becomes yin, that side becomes yang. I'm still pushing against him. I'm not relaxed, right? What people often misunderstand is that they think relaxing, you know, is just do, doing this. But you know, that's wrong. And if you, you know, if you do this, the guy will still catch you and push you off that if you do it sudden, right? So it's not that. It's, when Chan talk about relaxing and giving away, right? 舍己从人, letting yourself go and follow the other person. They don't mean letting yourself go and follow the person that's trying to push you, even if you're going to lose. That's a very stupid way to explain to understand those texts. It means that if you want to push my chest, I give him my chest, but I do not give him my back. Okay, so I give him what he wants, but I catch him somewhere else. Or if I give him my chest, I'm going to catch him with my hips, or, or, or whatever the case may, may be, like here, right? I give him my arm, but I'm going to catch him with my hips, or, or my tailbone, or, or my legs, or something. There's always something I'm going to catch him by. You know, if, if he's pushing here more, then I'm going to give him this and catch him there. That's another example. So there's always, you always yield on the point of contact and where his force is being applied but you don't yield a single inch on the next part that you're using to fight against him. So Taiji is not about yielding as in I move away from him when he's going to push. Right? It just means that I don't fight on the immediate, the immediate point of contact. I fight you know, one joint off or one joint forward. And in doing so, it messes up his expectation to force. And therefore, he cannot seize my center of balance or it's easy for me to seize his center of balance. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to add something to this, but this is kind of hard to, to see. Uh, and what does it feel like when I change the different uh, ways? Yeah, yeah, so... Um, it's, it's, it's actually a pretty um, cheesy saying, as per se. Um, you can only fight a battle if you have got an end. Um, so that's basically how that's how, cheesy, man. <laughs> how, how how it is. Um, although, um, so that that's that's how to describe it in words. But in terms of feeling, right? It's it's basically, you know, it's as if let's say for example you push against a wall, right? Um, you can feel that the wall is there. So um, the, 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 during the demonstration between Chris and I, um, it feels like that. When I push against his chest, and when he does the, the separation, uh, it feels out that there's nothing for me to push against. But he's not yielding, so there's no result. But something else is, is, is fighting. You, you, you don't know where or what is fighting me, and what is actually holding his structure or, or his chest up. But you, it feels out that you, 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 it's just not there, but, you're not, uh, but he's not moving. So it's almost like you know you're climbing a um, you're, you're climbing a wall without solid handholds. You know you, you're not you're not going up, but there's nothing for you to grip on, and and yeah, and you're basically not getting anywhere. That that's how it feels like. Is that he saw he, he, Chris is not moving back, but you and you I, and I was applying force already, and and I just don't know how to, how how is it possible. Why? Why is he not moving back? But he's—you can feel that he's pushing back, but just not on the point of contact. I think that—that's that, that, just how it is. There's no effect on him. He's not moving an inch. You—you you know, I know that I'm pushing his chest. This is coming from me. But he's just not moving. The force is there, but you don't feel it. That, that, that's hard. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, I don't know the exact science behind this. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly the science. The other thing I can explain through science is I don't know, but it does work. And there must be a scientific explanation. I just haven't figured out it. 
because I know I don't actually do science full time. So, yeah. Um, right, so this isn't an application, right? No one's going to push on your chip. And don't think for a second that because I can do this, I can let him punch me and I can still absorb that force. It doesn't work like, like, like that, right? Um, even if you can dissipate the force through a punch, you don't let people punch you for free, okay? Um, that's not how Tai Chi works. So anyone out there who thinks that Tai Chi is about being able to dissolve any force you have and therefore let the guy hit you as many times as they want and you feel nothing, yeah, you live in a dream, okay? It doesn't work like that. The whole thing about the drawing for separate up in and yang is only to give you a split second of an edge. But as I say, when you push it like this, right, we're doing a testing, it's like a test lab experiment. It's giving me one force, okay, to my chest. And I'm just in that one force and using my battery resistance. If he's actually an aggressor, someone who's trying to hurt me, he's gonna stop that force and do another one. Okay? And if I didn't catch the second force on time, he will be able to catch me before I uh, am able to adapt to the second force again. So this doesn't work in a fight as a prolonged solution. Okay? A lot of these masters, some of the masters out there who actually have some genuine skill, I'm not gonna mention names, but they are ones who have some degree of genuine skill. I'm not saying they're good or very good, but they have some skill. But they oversell their stuff. So this is one of the places where they oversell. Right? They can apply this in a control environment on the test subject, a student who's doing a constant long force. But it doesn't mean he can, does, he can do it to someone who's actually doing rapid forces. And he doesn't tell people that. So, so the student will be fooled into thinking, wow, if the master can resist the force like this, then he can resist a punch. And punching five times, it doesn't matter because he's not going to get hurt. That is a lie, all right? There's no magic in the world, as I keep saying. So those guys oversell what they're able to, to do in order to create a cult following or people worship these people like they have superpowers. But at the same time, they shy away from any real confrontation or challenge because they know that stuff doesn't work. But if it doesn't stop you from getting a punch, why do you even train this, right? It is simply to learn the body mechanic, okay? So that I let him push on my chair to see if my, I can separate yin and yang here. And why you want to separate the chest and yang is because when I'm in this position, right? I'm, now I'm talking about the, the chain principle, where it's, you know, the, the hip, tailbone, and, and the hand. But in yang style, not only is there that, I'm also holding out my chest and, and you know, putting yang onto my, my back. So this whole back all the way up to here and going to the inside here becomes yang, and then this is soft, and this is soft. So if this is hard push, it, it's still going to break my structure. Okay, even though, uh, you know, he's not pushing on my chest, but if your chest is young, it's still going to impend your structure. So you have to hollow this out in order for that force from here to land on your back and from the back to land on, on, on the hips. Right? So when I'm pushing him like this, the chest is also hollowed out. If you were to touch my chest here, you'll feel exactly how you feel when he's pushing on my chest. So that's why these things are important because all these different body parts, you separate yin and yang during any motion, okay? They might not be the one that getting pushed, but they still need to do their part. So this is not an application, but a method of training and testing to see if you have the correct structure. Now, how does this actually translate into application? Now, this isn't a video about how Tai Chi is supposed to fight, but I'm gonna briefly touch on the idea, okay? Again, a test example in the lab. Again, this is just to show force. So if he holds both my ribs and he's pushing against me, and I'm re resisting here, then you know we're in a constant struggle. If he's stronger, he's gonna win. Now people are gonna, you know, some people does Tai Chi is gonna do yielding. So so he will push. He's gonna do this, and when he's done with the force, pushes back. Okay. Problem to that is it only works on a dead person. If he's smart, at least well trained, he's pushing. Like, when I do this, I change his angle and push in and lock my arm here. And then, I'm, and then I'm stuck, okay, nothing I, I can do. Which is why you never want to retract your arm closer to you. Even though you are trying to dissipate the force here, he will change force and, and catch, catch you. He's not dead, right? He's alive, he's constantly trying to get to you. So those are bad examples of how to yield or, or dissolve power, it doesn't work. So in real Tai Chi, you cannot give a, an inch, right? In my learning, we talk about well, you don't give a single inch, and I don't, come back and then try to, to, to push it. Because when I come back, he knows that he, he will change and, and catch me in an awkward position. So, but then how do you yield, right? How do you do what Tai Chi said, right? 舍己从人, 敌被我顺. 
inside, you know, you give yourself up to follow him in order to put you in a superior position and him in a bad position. He also talks about which refers to Zhan needs to dissolve and seize his weight. So it means to apply my force, right? These two things need to constantly spin in a circle. So how does that translate into this, you know, Tesla example? When he's pushing against me and holding here, I can't let go of this arm, but I can change the connection so that he no longer feels the, okay, to push. He no longer feels it here, but on my back. And when that happens, for a split second, he's gonna feel his force slightly unbalanced. It's almost like I'm bringing him in without physically turning or changing my, my hand. So keep pushing, it's gonna be here, and then there. Okay, so that is a case lab example of how I circulate his force from here by, by changing the connection to my joints, apply it to my back, what I can do to my waist, right? Or, or whatever, and I can't do it to my feet yet, I'm not there yet. But, so you can do that and then bounce him back. Now, again, this is a test example. Doesn't mean I can do this to a guy who's trying to, to throw punches at me. But, if we hypothetically look at it, right, I'm not saying I'm good enough to use Tai Chi in a fight yet, okay? But if I want to explain to you how it is, how it should have been applied, is that when he throws, let's say he throws a hook, okay? Instead of blocking here and receiving all his power into me, I mean, I can stop the punch, but I'm gonna either get knocked over the side where I'm gonna at least receive a lot of shock which is uncomfortable, I'm going to get to a point where I'm going to throw a hard punch. So I'm going to get to a point where I try to, to connect that force to my back so that it no longer hinders my arm as much like, it, like, like he's actually hitting me into my back. So my distribution of his incoming force is more largely spread than if he's throwing a, a hook and I'm blocking it, it, it here. And by testing up here, I'm giving him more control over my frame, right? Just like the pulling and, and you know, the, the pulling example. If I tense here, he controls me more. If I tense here, I'm allowing him to push in. But if he punch that and I do that, then he force affects less on me. For example, so one way I will you know do to stop a hook is to go like this, and then from here, then try to affect his weight and don't let him be able to pull back and hook again, right? It's a very crude example. Like I said, this isn't a video about how to apply tight in combat, but you can see how this whole manipulation of yin and yang and how to not be affected by his force and, and to hide where your center of force is and catch his would work. And should he be really tense up here, right, when he throws that, that punch, you see he will actually lose balance a lot more. Okay, so when the yeah. So when he's using a lot of force, I'm tensing up here, right? And I'm intercepting, but using the fulcrum leverage principle, the separation of yin and yang, then essentially what happened is he's actually pushing, in, doing in pushing here, he's actually also pulling himself off that way, right? Which is why if he's really tense and I'm using the right uh, structure and receiving it on my back, then, 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 then that happens. But obviously, um, if he's relaxed, then even if I do that, nothing happens because these two bounce it off. But he isn't tense enough to pull himself over that way, and therefore I can't pull himself over that way either. And that actually reflects another quality in Tai Chi, which is to using something else to force against him. Right? There are a lot of different explanations on what it means, and a lot of cheesy ones like he punches, I'm going to pull him that way, you see his force against him, or whatever else. But this is actually what Tai Chi means by using the force against him, is that in, in him using a lot of force in punching me, he's actually destabilizing himself because I'm intercepting here, and he's tense, and my force is for further behind on the, on the balance beam, and therefore he pulls himself over rather than punching me inwards, okay? But obviously, this is not magic, like he's saying. So if there was Tyson in his prime and he threw a book, I'm gonna get killed. Okay, there's no way out because you know, he's much, much stronger. But if you're somebody of similar size, even if he's slightly stronger, or if he's untrained but stronger, this will work quite well. Okay, you got to realize that martial art, first and foremost, is for self-defense. Okay? And you don't go on the street every day 
and have Tyson mark you or assault you. Okay, if you are on the street and Tyson come and want to kill you, you know what? Make peace with it and die. Okay, I mean there's nothing you can do about that or buy a gun or whatever. But the point is, if someone is that skilled and trained and strong and physically capable, want to kill you, you're gonna have a hard time no matter what style you you, you do. You simply just don't match up to his abilities and athleticism. But the truth is, majority of the time, you're going to encounter untrained people or less trained people who might be a bigger or stronger, but they don't have the same training. In which case, if you have to create training and mechanic, internal mechanics will help you a great deal to overcome that brute strength. And that is the real purpose of self-defense, right? So don't always compare this with professional fighting because those are not the same thing. You know, after the same thing. And if you spend you know, one day a week doing MMA, you are not going to be able to fight Tyson either. You are still not going to be able to match up to you know, professional fighter level. So it's dumb to compare Chinese martial arts to that, but don't compare. You're not, not realizing that it's actually about the amount of time you put in your training. And obviously, I am not saying that Chinese martial arts doesn't have its problems. I mean, I will go as far as say maybe 80-90% of the schools out there are full or they're teaching the, the wrong stuff and they don't work at all, they don't know how hard you train. But even the authentic stuff, you have to realize it has its limitations depending on how much training you put in. Alright, so that is how it works with both. Now I'm going to look at another example on how people tend to mystify this whole thing and create a cult following. I have seen masters, I'm not going to mention names, but they are people who I think have certain degree of skill but they are not great masters or they are overselling what they are capable of. So they will do something like a dreadlock, right? So this kind of will do a dreadlock like this. So they will have the student, um, you know, grab the arm and do a, do, and do a dreadlock. And then they will say, you know, if I'm fighting with my force, I can't, which is true, you can't. You know, you're in a bad position. These students are not going to bend this way. It doesn't have enough support to pull backwards. So if you fight with your arm, you will not be able to win, okay? The problem is, from here, they will say that, okay, but if I channel chi into my arm, then I'll become a host, and then I'll overcome that student. That student will even exaggerate a bit by jumping or, or whatever. That's, that's not the point. The point is, this has nothing to do with chi. We're gonna make another video on exactly what is chi, but I will just, for this video, say that you can't argue that chi does play a role, but chi is not the reason why this is happening. Why this is happening is because of separation of yin and yang and leverage and fracture and physics. Okay? So what happened is when he's bending me this way, I'm not fighting him back with my arm, he has control over my force. Much like when we were doing that pulling example. If you fight with this, he has control over your force. Okay? But if I don't fight him with this, he's still pushing me, but I'm trying to connect this to my back, waist and I fight him with my body. Then, all of a sudden, he's holding the stick, but he's not holding the, the origin of the force. The force is happening here, okay? It almost like if you imagine this is a, a, an object or a sofa or, or whatever, you know, an object, a furniture, and I push him this way, okay? I can push it, easy. But if I have a stick, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, but if I have a stick, and I'm trying to push him from here, it's much harder. Because I, although I'm still applying the same amount of force, but I'm further away from him, from the center of his weight. Okay? So I have less control or less effect on him than if I just you know, push him like that. This is much better. So, this again is another way of looking at the delivery and the principle, okay? So, based on this, essentially, when he's holding my arm, and I'm trying to use my connector to get use my body to overcome him, to him, it's like he's trying to push me, but with a stick, or on the end of the stick, but not directly on me. So, he has less control over it. Okay, so, so that's pretty much what it is. Let me take another example, right? There's another one where they will do 
you know, unlock like this. So same, same thing. So of course, if you are like locked here, I can pull harder, right? And if I was fighting back with my arm, I can't because this is a weak joint, right? And he's got me here. But if I'm here, extend my fingers, connect my, my back, short extend, everything, okay? I do this. Then you get thrown over. And then, you know, those, those honest per Tai Chi guys will tell you this is, you know, Chi magic, this is, you know, divine power, whatever. It's just physics. Okay, when he's holding my arm here and fighting with my arm, I'm localizing the 4D and he has 100% control over my foot that I can be pulling the anything. When my connectors to my waist, to my back, to my waist, and to my leg, so suddenly he's not holding the origin of my foot. So I'm not pushing him here. Okay, put down, right? I'm pushing him with this. So he's in a bad position to apply foot. You know? I'm in a better position. That's all, all there is. There is no, there's no chi magic. That's what I'm saying, okay? So any Tai Chi guy that you come across that starts with Chi magic, even if he has some real skill, I would say stay away from him because um, you may spend 10 years, 20 years with him and you still not going to learn the real thing because he's not going to tell you the trick behind the magic. He's going to just sell you all the charades and all the cold stuff, you know. Today you're going to receive power from heaven, tomorrow you're going to like, you know, open your third eye and the next day you're going to like, you know, feel the vibration of the universe. And at the end of the day, you're still not going to get anything, right? Despite whether he understands the principle or not, he's not going to share it with you because when you reveal the trick behind the magic trick, the magic trick becomes cheap. And they need that magic trick to draw in more code members to pay them big money so they can live a better life. Because you know, if they actually tell you it's just leverage, you you, you get it in you know, you understand the principle in one day. If you train, you get it in a few months, and then you move on because they have nothing more to offer. So that is the reality of what really goes on in Tai Chi. It's, it's purely leverage, welcome structure, the four core principles, right? If you haven't seen my other video on that, go watch that. And then lastly, you know. Um, Separation of yin and yang, the heart of Tai Chi. Any point of contact that the opponent has on you, you let that go. And you catch him somewhere else. And apply force there. Alright, so this will you know this will conclude today's video on what it means to do Tai Chi. And of course this will contradict a lot of other people out there, right, who say Tai Chi is wrestling or Tai Chi is boxing or Tai Chi is whatever. Okay, but irrespective of whether you're going to throw a person or you're going to punch a person, as long as you are using the separation of yin and yang, then in a sense you're doing Tai Chi. Okay, so shall I say, first of all, you need separation of yin and yang. Second of all, you need the, the full process, right? Jie, hua, na, fa. Jie is receive. Hua is dissolve, the incoming force that you receive. Na is seizing the center of his balance, or putting it forward, or whatever. Far is to send him back or punch him. Okay. Only when you complete these four procedures or stages can you call what you do Tai Chi. If you don't have this, you're not doing Tai Chi. Okay. It's as simple as that. Even though this doesn't always happen in the textbook way. Like I showed with the hook, it could happen in the split of a second. But in that split of a second, I still have to complete engage or contact, the zoning his force into my frame. At the same time, make the connection to, to take his weight that way. And when he's being tortured, then far will be, you know, if I have that done beer, we will just be here, right? Or I just have to do a pine. At that point, it doesn't matter how you hit him, right? It's not important. You don't have to, have to do a Tai Chi move on that beer to make it Tai Chi. But if, if this move has to be and then eventually, you know, I can touch him any, anyhow, as long as it's effective to, to send him out, you complete it. You know, an attack or an, an approach to combat following the Tai Chi principle according to the Tai Chi classic. Alright, so I hope you guys found this video interesting. If you have any questions, comments, you're welcome to, to leave them and I'll definitely get back to you. And if you find my channel more helpful and you're willing to contribute, please visit me on Patreon. It will help me a lot. Uh, so thanks for watching Trust the Martial Art channel and I'll see you next time.